Hello everyone, I am Dr. Sana Faruqi, Assistant Professor from the Department of English, BSSS Bhopal. Would like to welcome you all in the fifth module of the lecture series on communication. Today, I have come up with a topic on the theory given by Shannon and Weaver. This is a theory which uh, has been uh, given in a communication paper. It is little, little uh, you know, technical, but we'll try to understand it and, uh, you know, we'll come up with the solution on it. So, Shannon and Weaver theory of communication. You can see on the screen there are two uh, pictures. One left side is uh, Claude Shannon, whereas right side is Warren Weaver. So, on these two you know, people, these two names, this theory has come up as a Shannon and Weaver theory. This theory has been given in a paper which is little technical. So what is there in it and why, uh, you know, this theory has come up with these two names? Who were they and uh, what was the objective of this theory? We'll try to understand and answer all these queries in this session. Let us try to move to the next slide. That is Shannon and Weaver theory of communication only. Let's have a look on the right side of your screen. It's a cover page of the book on under which, you know, this particular um, uh, paper or article was published. The title of the book was The Mathematical Theory of Communication. Now, this is the title of the book, which was written by Claude E. Shannon and Warren Weaver. So what is there in it? The Shannon Weaver model was first proposed in 1848 article called A Mathematical Theory of Communication. Communication in the Bell System Technical Journal by Claude Shannon and Warren Weaver. So, what ha has been given here that this is an article or maybe a kind of journal which was there in a book called The Mathematical Theory of Communication. Mathematical itself is telling you something related to maths. Are we going to study maths in it? Uh, not exactly, but we'll try to understand what is there in it and why have we been given this uh, you know particular topic in a communication paper which is not at all uh, related to maths. So, we'll try to understand it in the next slide. Let's have a look on the third slide of uh, the topic, theory of communication we are continuing. What is there in it? Mathematical theory of communication that argues that human communication can be broken into six key concepts. You can see one, two, three, four, five, six. If you remember, I taught you in one of my lectures that what is the process of communication? You know the process, right? Sender, I'm encoding the message to you via channel. You are the receiver. You are giving me the feedback. You were all, you know, aware of those, uh, you know, elements of uh, communication. But here we have been given one more term which was not told to you in the process of communication. That is the reason this topic is different from the process. This is noise. So what is there in noise? Noise when you have been keeping a noise in the background of uh, yours, you wouldn't be able to understand it. I'm not talking about the barriers to communication, but I'm going to talk about this theory, which was basically given by Shannon and Weaver. They talked about noise on a prominent you know, basis on this particular uh, theory. What is there in it? We'll still try to understand it in the uh, next slide. Let's have a look on this picture and try to understand it. What is going to be there in the next slides? So could you understand this picture? Could you understand this slide? There is a noise you can see there are some faded images can be found in the background of it if you couldn't see it encode uh, you know transmit receive decode interpret there is a picture there is a process but if you have noise in the background you may not be able to understand any message I am teaching you but at the back if there is a noise you won't be able to understand me uh, so we will try to understand that why this term has been given by Shannon and Weaver in this theory. This picture is exactly telling you what is there as a gist of this entire theory. Let's have a look on the next slide. A later version of the theory by Norbert Wiener. Again, this is an important name because he's the one who came up with the word, the uh, you know, seventh element called feedback. So he added the seventh concept called feedback, uh, which uh, changed the model of, from linear to cyclical. So you can see again, there is a picture, um, sender, encoder, third one is channel, fourth is noise we are talking about here and then decoder and the receiver and feedback. So the seventh term was given by Norbert Wiener. And um, yes, we are going to talk about uh, uh, theory only. Let's have a look on the next slide. This one is, yeah, what is it? It is known as the mother of all models. Now, yes, this theory has been known as the mother of all the models. There are various models given under communication. We are going to focus on this particular, uh, you know, model 
because it has come up with the mother of all models. So because of its wide popularity, it's a very famous theory given by Shannon and Weaver. Now, what is there in it? This can be, uh, you know, uh, uh, known as or named as with many theories. Let, let's have a look on the bullet. The model is also known as information theory or the Shannon theory or the Shannon Claude theory. Now, what is it? Claude Shannon was the main person who developed the theory. I told you in the beginning of the lecture that there are two people who gave, came up with this theory called Shannon and Weaver. But I want to tell you now that Shannon was the one who prominently worked on it, this, uh, on this theory. And uh, that is the reason we call this theory as a Shannon theory also. Next point is saying the model's primarily value is explaining how messages are lost and distorted in the process of communication. Sometimes whatever I'm trying to say and explain you, the message can be lost. What is the reason? The reason being uh, the noise in the background. So this is what, you know, Shannon wanted to convey in his theory. It would be more clear if we'll go with the next slide. Uh, you can see the picture. Uh, it's a very simple linear pattern of communication where we have been given sender and then the uh, channel is there. It can be verbal, it can be non-verbal. And then there is a message and then again a channel via channel that message has been uh, reaching to the receiver. We all know this is the process. But what is there in the background? Just focus on the background of it. Noise, 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 noise. If there is a noise at the background, communication would uh, you know not be possible. And this is what the theory has come up. So the Shannon and Weaver model of linear model of communication that provides a framework for analyzing how messages are sent and received. So noise we have to focus under this theory. Next bullet, next um, slide is talking about the theory itself. Uh, it is the best known for its ability to explain how messages can be mixed up and misinterpreted in the process between sending, receiving the message. Sometimes what happened, you know, messages are misinterpreted. Maybe I am trying to tell you something, but you are understanding it in a different way. Or oh, maybe you have been responding my message and I am not getting what you are saying. So somewhere, you know, misinterpretations can also be found in any of the stages. Again, this is also one of the features of uh, uh, Shannon Weaver theory of uh, communication. Next bullet is saying Shannon in his famous article called A Mathematical Theory of Communication. Remember, this is the name of that uh, book where he outlined the theory, explained what the goal of his model was. So in this book, he came up with the goal, uh, the objective of this theory. What was it? Now, I want to quote uh, these lines from the book. The fundamental problem of communication is that of reproducing message sent from one point either exactly or approximately to other point. So this is given by Shannon uh, which uh, from the book which was published in 1948, page number uh, 379. If you want to quote it, you can quote it. You would definitely get good marks if you, you know, directly quote from the book. So what is there in it? Uh, you know, this method, using this mathematical theory of communication, he hoped to more effectively identify those pressure points where communication is distorted. What are the points? What are the points in which, you know, communication gets distorted sometimes? We need to focus on those points in this particular theory. Let us have a look on the next uh, slide. Shannon and Weaver. Now, in this particular slide, we actually want to understand and we are going to understand Shannon and Weaver. Okay, and compare them. So, Shannon and Weaver are both from United States and Claude Shannon was a mathematician. So, you can see his field was uh, maths. You know, he has come up with a uh, um, you know, mathematical field and he was a great mathematician. That is the reason the entire theory that is mathematical theory also called, you know, this for this theory, this that is also the term. Uh, so, uh, Claude Shannon was a mathematician, whereas Warren Weaver was an electrical engineer. So he came up, he joined this theory because he wanted to put focus more on gadgets. You know, when we talk on phone, when we uh, communicate on gadgets. So sometimes uh, because of poor technical, uh, you know, uh, help, message cannot be reached on time. So this is, you know, he came up with that technical point in it because he was an electrical engineer. So next point is, many believe this mathematical theory of communication was mainly developed by Claude Shannon alone and Warren Weaver had a minimal role. As I told you in the previous slide that, you know, Claude Shannon and on his name only, uh, you know, this theory, uh, most of the websites would tell you that on his name, this theory would come up if you will search it because Warren Weaver had a 
minimal uh, you know role in it now it is often simply called as the shannon information theory in science discipline now what is the next point shannon developed the theory to imp uh, improve understanding of communication via telephone eventually improve the quality of phones now this topic uh, this theory has come up with uh, a mathematician and electrical engineer but we have been trying to understand it in english communication paper because somewhere we have taken it in a very general way just to have a look on the last point it was later used as a general theory of communication so we have been taking without focusing on the gadgets or technicality of that particular theory we are just absorbing it and trying to understand that somewhere if no matter if the platform is offline online technical non technical but if there is a noise at the background it would be difficult for the sender to you know send the message to the receiver so we have been keeping up uh, this theory as a general uh, theory of communication now this uh, again this picture would uh, make us you know understand this uh, theory in a very easier way there is a sender who has been encoding the message via channel and somebody i mean the receiver is decoding the message and this is a receiver but somewhere this channel has been uh, disturbed by noise in it so we need to focus on noise because this was not there when we were studying process of communication so noise is the main gist of this theory okay now next one is noise i want to focus on noise here you know what sender is who is receiver what is the channel uh, what is the uh, feedback i explained you everything in the process of communication but we need to focus on this new terminology which has been given by shannon and weaver that is noise now noise can be interpreted in two different uh, uh, you know fields or areas first one is internal second one is external what is there in it noise interprets a message while it is on the way from a sender to receiver it is named after the idea that noise could interpret our understanding of a message now there are two types of noise first one is internal second one is external we'll try to understand internal and external in the next slide you can understand the picture uh, there is a sender he has been standing and trying to uh, you know explain something there is a receiver receiver is also confused sender is also confused there is a mess in their communication they are not getting what has been going on you know so what is it internal and external we'll try to understand it internal noise happens when a sender makes a mistake encoding a message or a receiver makes a mistake decoding the message here the two points were uh, you know it where it can happen at the point of encoding for example when you misspell a word suppose i have been texting you on whatsapp or i have been mailing you on email and i have somewhere uh, written uh, you know something wrong i misspelled the word you may not be able to understand what what am i trying to say to you so this is a kind of um, you know also a kind of noise we, here we don't have to understand noise in a way of honking or any kind of uh, you know noise uh, physically produced but it can be of any types depression tension um, illness um, headache uh, stomach ache poor concentration this is all coming under the category of noise according to shannon and weaver weaver's theory so next one is external noise so we discussed about internal and that next is external noise uh, happens when something external not in the control of sender or receiver impedes the message so external noise happens let's have a look on the example at the point of transmission through the channel for example when we are having a conversation by a busy highway and the receiver is having trouble hearing over the sound so as i told you noise can be considered in both the ways internal and external internal means when there is somewhere noise is in your head you are not able to concentrate on the person you are not able to focus on the topic that means there is a noise inside you whereas external means somewhere you are on the platform or a highway or a road and there is a honking going on there is a you know background noise and you are not able to understand the communication or message or anything so this is called external so what is the objective of theory we'll try to focus on the objective why he has come up with this theory what is the objective of it one of the key goals for people who use this theory is to identify the causes of noise and try to minimize them to improve the quality of the message we actually need to imp uh, you know improve the quality of message if you are talking to somebody if you are you know communicating with somebody you should actually keep uh, both the areas in your mind internal and external noise should not be there you should uh, you know be um, with a very um, you know attentive mindset there should be no noise in your head and external we can anywhere you know rectify next is example it is there on the screen examples of external noise may include the cracking of a poorly tuned radio lost letter in the post interruption in the television broadcast failed internet connection these are all coming under the external um, you know uh, uh, you know problems now example of 
internal noise, a headache, poor concentration, someone speaking with a heavy accent, with the sender, mumbles when speaking. So if I will mumble, if I will not be audible to you properly, I won't be able to explain myself and you won't be able to understand me. So this is also a kind of noise which uh, somewhere put an obstacle in the uh, message. Now this is an ideal communication. This is what the gist of this theory. Suppose this is a sender who uh, you know the sender has been wondering about a triangle maybe a triangle shape and then this is a thought now you should understand the same way whatever has been told to you you should actually get the message in that way only if i have been wondering about something if i have been explaining you something you should actually take that message in that same way then only i would call that you know this is an ideal communication whatever i want to say you have understood it if i'm saying a you understood it as a only not with v or o or b or any other alphabet this is an uh, this is a condition of you know ideal communication this man has come up with the same uh, message whereas the next slide would tell you that what is the problem in it see the same um, uh, sender and receiver is there but yes the thought was of triangle uh, she encoded the message transmitted it receive uh, receiver received it decoded it interpreted it in a different way so you can focus on the picture she thought about triangle and the rest you know receiver has come up with circle this is somewhere uh, a kind of miscommunication which can be uh, produced or which can emerged when you know uh, you have a noise in the background noise can be found internal or external so somewhere this kind of communication is not at all successful because whatever sender wanted to say has not been reaching to the receiver this triangle has become circle at the end so this is somewhere you know a kind of failed communication so this is what um, we discussed in this uh, what are the key takeaways of this uh, particular uh, topic we will try to understand who was shannon we discussed about shannon who was weaver we talked about weaver also uh, mathematical theory of communication this theory can be named in many ways uh, like uh, mathematical theory theory of information shannon weaver theory so don't be confused there are uh, basically three names have been given on this uh, you know slide you can google and you can search according to these three different names and you would definitely get whatever you wanted to and next one is uh, what is noise in this theory so noise don't be confused on with this term noise is not at all meaning honking or you know physical noise it is one of the uh, factors but um, it can be internal also so this is also noise if I'm explaining you something and you're not getting it maybe my poor accent maybe my poor communication maybe uh, the rate of speech I have been using is very fast and somewhere it is a kind of noise and you could not understand the message so this can also be considered as a noise in this theory so what is the objective of theory we discussed all these points in this particular um, session I hope uh, this topic is clear to you if you still have been keeping any doubt you can ask uh, you know the questions in the chat box and I would be definitely there to answer them thank you so much we will meet in the next um, uh, session with some new learnings thank you